Hi, good day. This is Dr. Ligardo Rabongi Palaka Jr. once again. And welcome back to my channel. So, uh, I will be talking about experiment, experimental research which is requested by students take, uh, taking STEM strand uh, here in Dr. Cecilio Potong National High School. But before that, let me introduce myself, especially for the newcomers of my vlog. Welcome and thank you so much for coming. So, uh, formerly I was the research teacher of Manga National High School for two years. And in that short span of time, I was able to produce two groups that won as best, in res uh, best research in a TVL category and second runner up in or second place in the academic category. And last 2018, 2019, yes. October of 2019, I participated in an international research conference and I won as best in research presentation. So formerly, I was also connected with Holonim University for 10 years handling social sciences in research. So uh, going back to the, the, the main reason why we're here, so I will be giving you a short discussion about experimental research. Especially for the STEM and those taking um, TVL uh, tracks, the different strands in the TVL like cookery, uh, bread and pastry, caregiving, and the likes. So, uh, experimental research is a systematic and scientific approach to research in which the researcher manipulates one or more variables. At the same time, controls and measures any change in other variables. The basic purpose of this type of research is to investigate the influence of one or more variables. This is an experiment wherein the researchers manipulates one variable and control or randomize the rest of the variables. It has control group. The subjects have been randomly assigned between the groups and the researcher only test one effect at a time. So let us first look into the important terminologies that are involved in experimental research. First is of course systematic, then followed by scientific approach to research. So systematic means it involves steps in conducting experimental study. That means from the first step up to the last step, like for instance, the first step is identification and defining of the problem. Then you have to follow strictly all the steps involved before you would be able to come up with the result and communicating the result to a certain panels or to your teacher. And then scientific approach because it involves experimentation. Okay, so uh, it involves also variables. Then we have independent variables, dependent variable, and extraneous variables. So what do you mean by independent variable? So independent variable is the one that is being measured with regards to its possible effect to the dependent variable. And the extraneous variables are those factors that may affect the result of the study. So I would give you an example. Okay, coconut water as an alternative water for native for chicken. Okay, so again, coconut water as an alternative water for chicken. So what is your independent variable? The one that would affect your dependent variable. So your independent variable in this example is the coconut water. So we also call it as manipulated variable because this is the one that you would provide in order to measure its effect, desired effect to your dependent variable or to your hosts or to your subject. So sometimes it's also called as, not sometimes, but it's also called as the experimental variable. Okay? So coconut water is an alternative water for chicken. Our independent variable, there is the coconut water. 
So what is now the dependent variable? Of course, the chicken. Because the chicken is the, the chicken or the chickens are the subject of the experiment. Uh, it's the recipient of the coconut water. So in this case, the, there would be two groups of chicken. The control groups, okay? We have group A, chicken being watered with given coconut water. And group B, chicken being given the ordinary water for chicken. So that's it. How about the extraneous variables? So what, what do you mean by extraneous variables? So extraneous variables are all other variables that may affect or provide effect to the, uh, to the result of the experiment. So we're talking here about feeds, housing, uh, vitamins, and others. So in experimental research, the extraneous variables or the other variables must remain constant. Like for instance, it provide, <clears throat> say, one cup of, or say, half kilo of feeds to uh, group A. So again, group A is the chicken being given coconut water. And the group B is the chicken given the ordinary water. So if you are giving um, half kilo every meal time, so it should remain constant. It's also true to the other group. Okay? So that's it. So our hypothesis now, so take note that the uh, experimental research involves looking into the answer of the hypothesis. The hypothesis can be one or two. So it depends upon the, uh, the intention of the researchers. So the hypothesis is there is no significant difference on the weight of chicken given coconut water and chicken given ordinary water. So that hypothesis is the motivation for the experiment. So in other words, experimental research is highly <coughs> controlled procedure. So the, manipulate, the manipulated variable, which is known as the experimental or independent variables, which are applied upon another factor called the dependent variable and to determine the effect of the former to the latter. All other factors are to be kept constant. Okay, so you have already uh, two set of chickens in that example. So how many times you will measure the weight of your chickens? So it depends upon your intention. You can have it if you're using broiler chicken because it is known to, have, to gain weight faster than the other type of chicken. So that is the most appropriate. So you can have it like every five days or every three days. So you look for a literature that would say that it is safe to measure the weight of the chicken every three days. And you would you would do the same. Okay, like for instance, you would say for 30 days, you would measure the total weight of chicken of group A and group B and look for difference okay so it is that very simple okay so that is simple experimental research that can be conducted in your respective home nowadays that we are uh, not doing the face-to-face -face, uh, instruction because we're doing the printed modular instruction okay so uh, in experimental research it is important that there is an established hypothesis. And a hypothesis, by the way, is a statement to be proven or disapproved. Once the statement is made, experiments are begun to find out whether the statement is true or not. This type of research is the bedrock of most sciences in particular the natural sciences. So experimental research is associated with four primary factors. This is according to Hock, Cormier, and Bounds in 1974. That is still true up to this time. So first is 
the random assignment of individual subjects to comparison groups. Like for instance, with our example, you are using chicken, so you have five chickens for group A and five chickens for group B, and they are randomly assigned to group A and group B. Okay? And the next is the extent to which the independent variable can be manipulated by the researcher. So, what is the extent of the manipulation? Okay, so you have to establish that you would be using, say, one cup or there is a certain amount of measurement. There is a specific measurement with the coconut water being used as water to the chickens. So, uh, you have to measure it exactly from day 1 up to day 30. And then the third one is the time when the ex observation or measurements of the dependent variable occur. Okay? So, you should establish a particular, say, guide or a particular, say, um, timetable with regards to the measurement of the chicken. So, you would say every after three days or every after five days because there is this literature or there is an expert uh, expert on chicken that uh, said or confirmed the literature being gathered that it is safe to measure the chicken every three days or five days. And the measurement should also be constant. Like if you are measuring it every third day, it, 8 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the afternoon so it should remain the same up to the 30 days to the 30 the 30th day and then fourth one is which groups are measured and how the portion of sample or population that is exposed to a manipulation to the independent variable is known as a treatment group okay so for instance um so we're now talking about how it is being measured and how many of the of the sample group is being measured. So in our example, you're only for for economic reasons, you're only using five chicken in every group. So each chicken will be measured and it is very important that the measuring device that you are using is the same from uh, the first uh, time that you measure the chicken up to the last time. Like if you would measure the chicken 10 times, so you would be using the same uh, weighing scale or measuring scale and it must be calibrated properly because er erroneous uh, calibration of the measuring scale would affect the result of your study. Okay, that's it. So it is really very important that you would follow these four primary factors because this would affect your experiment. So if you have questions regarding experimental research, just contact me in my FB, I, uh, uh, Ligardo Palaka Jr. Doc Lee. Okay? Or send me a message via Gmail, Ligardo Palaka Jr. at gmail.com. Or you may also uh, write your comment here in the comment section. That's it.